For decades, humanity has trembled before the xenomorph, the perfect organism, a creature of nightmare with acid for blood and an instinct for annihilation. We've seen it decimate colonies, lay waste to ships, and turn entire planets into breeding grounds. But what if the xenomorph isn't truly unchallenged? What if on its home world, Xenomorph Prime, there exists a species that, against all odds, has evolved to meet its horror head-on? This is the story of the unnamed reptilian predators theorized by Dr. Wadeslaw Orina, a species not meant to dominate, but to maintain a brutal, delicate balance. Imagine a creature born from the very crucible of Xenomorph Prime's dangers. These formidable beasts are quadrupedal, their powerful, low-slung bodies moving with a primal efficiency. Every ounce of their musculature is dedicated to power and resilience, allowing them to traverse the treacherous, acid-scarred terrains with effortless grace. Their most defining feature is their thick, armored hide. This isn't just skin, it's a living fortress, a leathery, calcified carapace that boasts incredible density. It's been described as a pale, creamy skin, almost blending into the ash and mineral dust of their world. Yet it's tough enough to shrug off the glancing blows of a xenomorph's razor-sharp claws. Think of it as a biological plate male, honed over millennia to resist penetration. Their heads are substantial, housing powerful jaws that open to reveal not just one, but multiple rows of serrated teeth. These aren't just for biting, they're for tearing, stripping, and crushing the chitinous extructures and dense bone of their most dangerous rival. And then, there are their eyes. Blazing orange orbs that pierce the perpetual gloom of Xenomorph Prime. These aren't just for show. They likely possess superior low-light vision, perhaps even infrared or ultraviolet spectrum perception, giving them a critical edge in the dim, often obscured environments where Xenomorphs thrive. Adding to their fearsome visage are bony protrusions, jagged, calcified spikes that jut forth from their shoulders, legs, and tails. These aren't merely intimidating. They serve as vital defensive points, deflecting attacks, and perhaps even as offensive weapons, allowing them to deliver punishing blows during a frenzied struggle. Their clawed fingers are thick, strong, and tipped with hardened keratin, capable of gaining purchase on even the most slippery, acid-slicked surfaces. And, of course, rending tough hide. But how could any creature survive the ultimate defense of the xenomorph? Its molecular acid blood. This is where the reptilian predator truly shines, an evolutionary marvel. Their defining characteristic is a profound, intrinsic immunity to xenomorph acid blood. This isn't just passive resistance, it's an active, biological miracle. Their blood, unlike any known terrestrial species, is notably black in color. This hue isn't merely aesthetic, it's a telltale sign of its unique composition. It likely contains a highly specialized buffering agent, or a potent alkaline compound that acts as an immediate, rapid neutralizer of xenomorph acid on contact. Imagine the moment of impact. As a droplet of acid lands, specialized platelets in their bloodstream are instantly activated. These cellular defenders rush to the site, releasing a cascade of neutralizing enzymes, effectively dousing the corrosive fire before it can cause cellular damage. Furthermore, their epidermal cells and the delicate mucous membranes of their eyes, nostrils, and mouth possess unique protein structures. These aren't just resistant, they form a constantly repairing natural barrier that prevents the acid from dissolving living tissue. It's a dynamic defense, constantly rebuilding and adapting. And it's not just external, it's highly plausible that their stomach lining possesses similar, robust adaptations, allowing them to safely digest xenomorph biome. This specialized physiology isn't an accident. It's the result of an relentless evolutionary arms race, where their ancestors, over countless generations, developed stronger and stronger resistances, eventually forging an immunity that borders on the mythical. Life on Xenomorph Prime is a constant, brutal struggle for survival, and these predators are perfectly engineered for it. The environment dictates their every move. They are predominantly solitary hunters, 
or at most operate in small temporary familial units. Large conspicuous groups would be an immediate liability, drawing unwanted attention from xenomorph swarms or competing megafauna. Their pale skin isn't just tough, it's an exceptional form of camouflage against the mineral-rich, often ash-laden, and perpetually twilight landscape of Xenomorph Prime. They are masters of blending into the shadows, disappearing amidst rocky outcrops, or melting into the hazy atmosphere, becoming ghosts until they strike. Their activity patterns are crucial. They are primarily nocturnal or crepuscular hunters. This isn't arbitrary. It allows them to capitalize on the xenomorph's probable reliance on infravision or other sensory inputs that might be less effective in reduced light. This gives our reptilian hunters a subtle, yet critical, advantage in the perpetual twilight of their homeworld. They meticulously establish and defend territories, marking them with potent scent glands or through unique, guttural vocalizations that warn rivals and perhaps even communicate with their own kind. Their robust build and bony protrusions aren't just for defense. They suggest an incredible resilience to the harsh environmental conditions. It's conceivable they possess the ability to burrow into the planet's crust, seeking refuge from extreme weather events, or perhaps to detect subterranean movements of xenomorphs or other prey adding another layer to their hunting prowess. While renowned for their perilous interactions with xenomorphs, these predators are, at heart, opportunistic carnivores. Their diet isn't solely restricted to the perfect organism. When xenomorphs are scarce, they would readily turn to the indigenous fauna of Xenomorph Prime, perhaps scavenging arthropods, massive subterranean worms, or other hardy creatures that call this hostile world home. However, their true test, their primary and most challenging prey, remains the xenomorph itself. Their hunting strategy is a masterclass in ambush and calculated aggression. They don't charge blindly into a hive that would be suicidal. Instead, they stalk their prey with agonizing patience, using their pale hide for cover, waiting for the precise moment to strike. They exploit environmental distractions, structural weaknesses, or moments of xenomorph vulnerability. Once engaged, the combat is a whirlwind of primal force. They utilize their powerful claws and crushing jaws, aiming with unerring instinct for the xenomorph's vulnerable points. The head, the jointed limbs, or the base of the tail where tendons and nervous systems are concentrated. Their incredible ability to ignore acid blood gives them an unparalleled advantage. They can grapple directly, tearing into their prey without the fear of corrosive splashback, a defense that would instantly incapacitate almost any other creature. This direct engagement allows them to dismantle a xenomorph in a way no other predator could. And as a final, subtle layer of defense, their own black blood could also be unpalatable or even toxic to any lesser predator that might attempt to scavenge or prey upon them, securing their place in the ecosystem. Given the relentlessly harsh environment and the ever-present threat of xenomorphs, their reproductive strategy is a testament to natural selection's focus on efficiency and survival. They don't flood the ecosystem with countless offspring, as many prey species do. Instead, they favor few offspring per reproductive cycle but each one has an incredibly high chance of survival, or they mature at a relatively rapid rate to cope with the attrition. They are likely oviparous, laying clutches of thick-shelled eggs in meticulously chosen, protected and often subterranean nests. These hidden sanctuaries shield the vulnerable eggs from both ambient environmental hazards and, crucially, from predatory xenomorphs. Parental care would be paramount, the female, or perhaps both parents, would exhibit fierce protectiveness, guarding their young with their lives until they are capable of fending for themselves. Critically, the young would likely be born with a rudimentary, inherent resistance to xenomorph acid, a defense mechanism that would strengthen and refine with age and controlled exposure to their world's unique dangers. This carefully controlled reproduction ensures that their numbers remain stable preventing overpopulation and reinforcing the theory of a shared niche rather than outright dominance over the xenomorphs.
The relationship between these reptilian predators and the xenomorphs is not simply one of predator and prey. It is a fierce biological rivalry for the same ecological niche. Dr. Arona's theory isn't about superiority, but coexistence. They don't sit above the xenomorph on the food chain. They compete directly for resources, for territory, each species inexorably linked, keeping the other's numbers in check. The combat between them is a brutal, awe-inspiring dance of claws, teeth, and sheer raw power. While the xenomorph's speed, terrifying inner jaw, and hive mind are formidable, the predator's impenetrable armor and miraculous acid immunity allow it to absorb devastating blows and counterattack with relentless force. These creatures are the natural, albeit not dominant, counterbalance a biological governor preventing xenomorph populations from spiraling completely out of control. They thin out encroaching hives, pick off lone drones, and challenge aggressive warriors, ensuring that neither species achieves absolute ecological supremacy on Xenomorph Prime. But this raises a profound question. Where did these incredible creatures come from? There are two compelling possibilities each with deep implications for the Xenomorph universe. The most primal explanation suggests they are truly indigenous to Xenomorph Prime. Their origins would trace back to the very dawn of this brutal ecosystem. Their lineage likely predates the full horrifying emergence of the Xenomorph as a galactic threat. Imagine smaller, hardier reptilian ancestors feeding on lesser organisms. But as the Xenomorph evolved its horrific arsenal, its molecular acid blood, rapid reproduction, and relentless aggression. These reptilian ancestors were forced into an evolutionary crucible, adapt or perish. Over countless millennia, advantageous mutations, thicker hides, internal acid pneumalizing compounds that gave their blood its dark hue, enhanced predatory instincts and the distinctive bony protrusions were rigorously selected for. Those individuals more resistant, better armored, and more adept at hunting the emergent terror survived to pass on their genes. This long, arduous evolutionary process forged them into the formidable creatures we imagine, intrinsically linked to the xenomorphs in a perpetual planet-shaping struggle. They are as much a product of Xenomorph Prime's deadly ecosystem as the xenomorphs themselves, a testament to life's tenacity even in the face of the ultimate horror. A more chilling yet equally plausible theory suggests these predators were not native to Xenomorph Prime, but rather introduced or even bioengineered by the engineers, or a similar ancient, advanced civilization. We know the engineers are masters of genetic manipulation, creators of both life and destruction. Could they have seen the destructive potential of the Xenomorph species and sought to create a biological control mechanism? These reptilian creatures, with their perfect acid immunity and robust physiology, would be the ideal candidates. If this were the case, they might have been specifically designed to target xenomorph weaknesses, or perhaps transported from another world where a similar acid-producing creature existed. Upon introduction to Xenomorph Prime, they would have rapidly naturalized finding their niche as a direct competitor and population regulator. Their current appearance, the pale skin, the orange eyes, the bony protrusions, might be the result of initial genetic design, further refined by natural selection on Xenomorph Prime as they adapted to the planet's specific conditions and the evolving Xenomorph threat. This theory paints a picture of a universe where even the natural enemies are part of a grand, terrifying, and possibly failed design. Regardless of their exact genesis, these unnamed reptilian predators stand as a stark reminder. Even in the darkest corners of the cosmos, life finds a way to endure, to adapt and to fight back against absolute terror.